Time to take some a moment to talk about social media. You know, it is now part of our everyday lives, like it or not. And we use it for many of us to keep up with loved ones and to share our lives with others. But what is it doing to our brains? Have you ever thought about that? Joining us this morning is Dr. Sarah Siovoshi. Uh, Dr. Sarah Siovoshi is here to talk about social media and how it affects our brain. Dr. Sarah Siovoshi, good morning. Good morning. Now, Dr. Sarah is a neurologist at UC San Diego. This is something you know. This is something that you have studied. What is going on with social media and how it affects our brain? Yeah, so it's something that I see sort of the results of when I see someone in clinic who says, I have so much stress, I have so much anxiety, and I tell them, well, what's your social media diet? Because inevitably, social media isn't something that we can escape from, right? So when we're um, confronted with the internet every single day, we are taking in, we are consuming what we see. So just as we've gotta be careful, and we talk about New Year's resolutions always in relation to what we're eating, our actual food diet, we mm. have to talk about our social media diets. So, um, Really importantly, it's important to, we're not just gonna be consuming fats, candy, sugar. What does that lead to? Obesity, heart disease, strokes, and ultimately death. So if all we're taking in is Instagram models and um, things that are uh, superfluous, that are superficial, right? That will eventually have an effect on our subconscious level. That can lead to stress, anxiety, increase our cortisol levels, which in the same way as a poor food diet can increase our risk of heart attack, stroke, and death. So it actually becomes physical at the end of the day, some of these results. Yes. And you know, we've done these stories, like you've pointed out, where all of a sudden we're starting to see a spike in uh, depression, a spike in even uh, suicide, where men and women are on social media, perhaps they're spending too much time and they're wanting to look like such and such person on social media. I mean, those are things that are starting to affect you mentally and then in the end, physically. Right, so what's really important to remember is that our eyes, our minds want to see things that captivate our attention, things that are beautiful. But what we have to try to do is develop a more all-encompassing view of what beauty really is. So beauty isn't what is just on the surface. Beauty is intellect, it's purpose, it's motivation. So if we can fine tune our social media diets to not just be looking at what's externally beautiful and we can sort of filter out, remember that you can see, you can click on see fewer posts, you can unfollow certain accounts mm. and you can include accounts that are a little bit more um, all encompassing of that type of beauty, right? Things that are informative, things that educate you that can have a much, um, you're basically opening up your social media diet to be more well-balanced and varied. Is that what you tell your, your patients when you see them? Yes, and then they ask me, so what if I don't? So what if I just, I'm interested in the celebrities and the Instagram models? Well then I say, what it can do is activate your brain in the same way that a cocaine addict's brain is activated. So remember, this is incredibly important for adolescents because their brains are not as fully mm -hmm. developed as an adult brain. So what can happen is when you're scrolling, 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 your brain's reward centers are activated. And that reward center leads to a rush of dopamine, which is a feel-good hormone, which is a feel-good neurotransmitter that causes a rush of excitement. And that is a sort of, an, that's the loop of addiction. Yeah. So rush of dopamine feels good. You want more of that. Scroll, 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 like, 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 reward center activation, release of dopamine, and so on and so forth. And you start Vicious feeling cycle. good. And then we're seeing, maybe that's perhaps why even when you're driving, you're reaching for that phone. Oh yeah. And you're doing social media. I mean, you know, I've been driving down the freeway and I'm like, is this person really on Instagram right now? Yeah, exactly. And it also causes that sense of hypervigilance, that hypervigilant state where your phone you think is going off. There's that phantom vibration or that phantom little ding because you're so excited about getting a like or getting a new follower mm -hmm. that you start to hallucinate sounds of your phone, right? Wow. It's because of that addiction. Dr. Sarah, this is uh, so eye-opening. The bottom line here as we wrap 
um, we really do need to start monitoring and maybe changing up our social media diet. Exactly. Wow. Yep. Great to have you here. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. Thank you. Important stuff here. Uh, once again, Dr. Sarah Siavoshi from, uh, from UC San Diego. Good, good conversation. Thank, Thank you. you.